Welcome to Your Bookkeeping Matters. I'm Lisa Turner, bringing you short and snackable weekly episodes on bookkeeping and business matters in an easy to understand way so you can be in control and confident that you know your bookkeeping matters. Let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to this week's short and snackable episode on all things your bookkeeping matters. Today, I'm going to dive into a few strategies and tips to help you navigate the challenges of taking care of your bookkeeping and numbers coming into end of financial year. So you know how to stress less this end of financial year. As we approach the end of financial year here in Australia, it's 30 June, It's not uncommon for small business owners to feel a wave of stress and overwhelm when it comes to their bookkeeping, especially if you are DIYing your books. But fret not because I have literally by design planned and started this whole podcast to alleviate some of the stress and unknown around your bookkeeping. And today is no different. If we are lucky enough to work with you as our client through my bookkeeping practice accounted for you, our services are fully done for you and you can rest easy knowing we're taking care of you. In the words of one of our brilliant tax agents that we work with and love, when he saw some of the things we do for our clients around end of financial year, he said, that's epic. I have never seen any other bookkeeper do that. So what do most small business owners stress to the max about around this time of year? Cash flow, because there are lots of payments coming up around now and things you need to have saved for. Things like your monthly or quarterly BAS, super, personal income and company tax if you have that structure, paying the bills on time, all those kind of payments. What can you easily do to ditch the stress around those? In a word, plan. Know what is due and when. Pop it in your diary. Have those funds squirreled away in separate savings accounts. When you're running a business, I always recommend to have a minimum two business bank accounts and more depending on how you like to run your finances. But the two are, one, your general income and expenses And two, the other for savings, where you can pop your GST, income tax, super, all aside, ready to pay as soon as they're due. I find business owners who don't plan their cash flow and save for these bills before they invest in other things and spend money in other places, always end up behind the eight ball and constantly chasing their tail to get back in front. So if you don't want this to be you, and you don't want to be stressing about the ATO bill and employee super and all those top of the list bills, plan and save for them. Once you get in that habit, it becomes second nature and a seamless way to both save and stress less around your cash flow when it comes to paying large amounts when they're due. I dive a little deeper on this one in a previous episode, Profit Strategies, How to Manage Your Money Right. So go back and take a listen to that one if you haven't already. Something else I see a lot of stress around is when you know it's coming up to that 30 June and you're not sure if you've been making a profit and therefore if you'll have any tax to pay is business owners scrambling to find all their expenses record them and update their bookkeeping. Again, this is another simple one. If you don't want to stress around this at end of financial year, around the financial organization of your business, and you want to know how healthy your business is at any given time, make sure you're doing your bookkeeping regularly. Don't leave it to the last minute. You'll probably have loads of lost invoices and receipts, meaning you can't claim those expenses and you can't even remember what you bought or what you need to find the receipts for to claim. Let's be honest, if you're running a business, you should be using accounting software. You want to be professional, organized, keeping accurate records, preparing your BAS, watching your expenses, and you can't do this well 
with a spreadsheet. It's too manual and too time consuming. I know a lot of businesses starting out use a spreadsheet as like a stepping stone, but if you're at the point you're registered for GST, you want to stress less come end of financial year and be organized, accounting software and regular bookkeeping is for you, my friend. If you pop aside an hour a week, you can always be on top of your numbers. If your bookkeeping piles up, you tend to ignore it more. It's a catch-22, isn't it? You ignore it because it's overwhelming. So it gets more overwhelming because there's more to do. You don't know where you're up to financially. Your tax agent wants to do some tax planning with you to give you an idea of how much tax you might need to pay. But you don't have any figures for them to work with. You get the drift. The flow on effect from not taking care of those numbers regularly adds to your stress everywhere. If this sounds like you and you aren't doing your books regularly, this is your sign to block out some time weekly in your calendar to get it done. And if you're still feeling like you can't do it, maybe it's time to ask yourself, should you be outsourcing your bookkeeping? Make sure you've listened to my episode, Hiring a Bookkeeper. Here's what you need to know so you can find the best one for you. That might even be us. The links to our services and where you can book a free call are linked in the show notes. So dive over and take a look at those. Because getting your bookkeeping taken care of by your trusty professional like us can alleviate another whole level of stress altogether. It's our job to take care of you and have the numbers squeaky clean for you all the time. So come end of financial year, you can make the business decisions you need to. Now, depending on your business, if you have employees, if you have products, if you're running profitably, how many things that you'll need to take care of in June. So this might look like a stock take as close to 30 June as possible, deciding if you need to pay any employee super in June for tax deductions, pricing reviews and contract updates. There's quite a few things that you might need to look at so that you're not stressing about them all put together a checklist that covers the things you need to do in your business for end of financial year and the dates they're due and block it out in your calendar so it doesn't get missed and you know you have the time aside to get it done right. Then you have this list to refer to each and every end of financial year that you can tweak and add to as things change and never be stressed about what you need to do in the end of financial year lead up again. I'll link my blog, which can be your starting point, the end of financial year checklist for small business owners. And right back at the very beginning of my podcast, I have a short and snackable episode, my top tips for a smooth end of financial year, which nuts out a few more of these finer details for you on these things that you need to do in June. The last thing I want to share today is an extremely common stress factor around end of financial year is the unknown. When you're new to running your own business, how can you possibly know all the things and keep on top of them and make sure they're done at the right time or not missed? Like those stock takes and employee super I mentioned. Your bookkeeper or tax agent asks you, what was your stock level on 30 June? Because they need it for your tax return. And you don't know the answer because you didn't do a stock take. Boom, an unknown request and you feel the stress rising. You didn't pay your employees super in June, earlier than the quarterly deadline, and you've missed out on the tax deduction for that financial year when you thought you could claim it and you were counting on claiming it, only to find out that you actually can't. On top of keeping that checklist to know what you need to put onto the list, connect yourself with a brilliant bookkeeper like me and a tax agent who will proactively keep you updated on what you need to know before end of financial year. We let our clients know well in advance what is coming, what they need to do, and most importantly, why. So it makes more sense and they understand the different impacts on things that are happening in their business financially. And educate yourself. Always be learning about your responsibilities as a business owner. While you probably didn't go into business to do bookkeeping, you still need to know what you have to do legally. 
The ATO won't give you any leniency if you miss things or don't pay because you say, well, I didn't know. You're running a business. It's your job to know. Or if it's all unknown to you, have someone trusted as part of your team to help you keep on top of these things. The more you know about what needs to happen, the less stressful and overwhelming it will be. I have loads and loads of blogs and podcast episodes, which of course are all free learning resources for you. Are you noticing the theme here on how to stress less over end of financial year? It's all about planning and being organized, which is how you stress less around pretty much anything in your business. And the numbers or bookkeeping are no different. If you don't plan and know what's coming up, of course, it's going to be a stressful, reactive time for you. So there you have it. The best way to stress less this end of financial year is to plan and be organized. Don't bury your head in the sand when it comes to your finances and bookkeeping at this time of year, especially, or at any time of year. If you're enjoying the podcast and finding it helpful for your business, I would love it if you left a review. This will help the show reach more business owners like you so they can learn more about their bookkeeping and business matters. It makes me extremely happy when I hear from each and every one of you who've taken the time out of your day to leave a feedback or email me. So thank you for that. And thanks for joining me today to remove some of the stress and overwhelm around your numbers and things to do this end of financial year, learning how to do business the right way. I will catch you next week with more numbers and insights that matter.